the revelation Jesus given to the John prophet. The first video explored how John compromised his apocalyptic prophecy, took a letter to seven churches in Asia Minor to challenge the comfort of the Christians suffering the apathy persecution under the Roman Empire. We encounter John's main symbol for Jesus, the slain lamb, who conquered the enemies by dying for them. He is the one who opens up the scroll containing God's purpose to bring kingdom on earth as in heaven. And scroll opening brought the warning of judgment like the plagues on Egypt. Like Pharaoh, the nations did not repent. And John introduced the multi ethnic army of the Lamb. The opening scroll revealed the strange mission to follow the Lamb, to bearing witness to God's justice and mercy before the beastly nations, even if it kills them, and conquer the beast by laying down their lives just like the Lamb. This will move the nation to repentance. In the remainder of the book, John fulfills the betrayal of the Pipees and the wars on God's people and how the whole story ends. At the seven trumpets, God stops the drumbeat of seven series of visions that call the signs. The word literally means symbols, as the chapters are full of them. The vision explored the message of the old man's scroll and them. This is the reveal the cosmetic spiritual battle, and suffering the seven churches under Roman persecution. It's a renovation of ancient conflict in the beginning of Genesis 3. And serpent, source or of evil, despected of a, a dragon, attacks a woman and her seed, represent the Messiah and his people. The Messiah defeats the dragon to the death and resurrection and a cast to evil. The dare of the dragon is by hatred, by persecution of the Messiah people. They will conquer the dragon by resisting the influence even if they kill them. John trying to show the churches that neither Rome nor any nations nor human is the real enemy. That the dark spiritual powers at work. Jesus followers will announce Jesus' victory. Very faithful and loving the enemy just like the slain lamb. John's next vision retells the story of the same conflict. It's time the early Sabbath Daniel's animal visions. John sees two beasts unpowered by the dragons. One represents the nation of military power conquered through the violence. Other visualize the iconic pearly machine that exalts the power as divine. As the beast of the man's full allegiance from the nations. It symbolizes taking the mark of the beast, symbol 666 on the forehead for or the hand. This is an infamous image. You won't discover the meaning by reading the headlines. John making clear Old Testament reference here. First of all, this marks the anti shaman where on the forehead is, is a clear reference Shema, the Jewish prayer allegiance to God that found in the book of Deuteronomy. The spirit is also written in the forehead and hand, a symbol devoting to all thoughts and action to the true God. And now the rebellion nations abandon their own legions, force everyone to decide whether to follow and the, the number of the beast, which has fascinated by the readers a thousand years, is not a mystery to John. He spoke Hebrew and Greek. Hebrew's letter was also numbers. And he spelled the word Greek word near Caesar and the word beast in Hebrew. Each word amounts to 666. Now John saying is not Nero was the only fulfillment of the vision. Now Nero is a seasoned example of the ancient patterns set out by Daniel. They should become beasts when they exalt their own powers and they call security as false gods and demand total allegiance. So Babylon was the peace, Daniel and the day, and God followed by period, and followed by Greece and now Roman John days, and all goes by for later nations that act in the same way. I'm standing opposed to beastly nations and dragons, another king. It's the slain lamb, his army who is given the lives to follow. In front of New Jerusalem, the song of victory goes out to the nations, and what John calls the internal gospel. I call everyone to repent, to worship God, to overcome the out of Babylon and will fall as days are numbered. John sees a vision of the final judgment, symbolize the two harvests, one of the good harvest grain of King Jesus and it comes to the gathering, the faithfulness of the people to himself. That is a harvest of wine grapes. Arabs by Haimanti exerted with evil are taken to the wilderness and trampled. Throughout the signs of vision, John is a placing a stark choice before the seven churches. Resist the Lord of the Babylon, or they follow the Lamb, or they follow the beast and the sufferer of its defeat. 
Now the choice is clear. John replay, replays the final cycle of the seven divine judgments, symbolizes the pouring of the seven bowls. Now we know from the land of scroll and from the sign division, many Mongol nations do repent. Now Exodus plagues are repented and poured out through the bowls. There are many people who do not repent. They resist and curse God just like Pharaoh. And all these the six bowl as dragon and the beast and are gathered the nations of all together to make war against the people and the people called Armageddon. They refer to plague in north of Israel where many battles were fought by Israel against the debating nations. Some people think the six bowls refer to an actual future battle. Some people think the metaphor for God's final justice. Either way, clearly an image of the book of Ezekiel about God's battle of Gog. Gog was Ezekiel's symbol of rebellious nation gathered before God to reveal the justice. So it comes in the seven bowl. The fourth final description of the day of the Lord. Evil defeats among nations once and for all. Now John has finally uh, unpacked the message of the Lamb on Seal Girl's throne and goes back to them and span the three key themes that he introduced earlier, the fall of Babylon, the final battle, defeat evil, and the arrival of the new Jerusalem. Each of these explores the final coming of God's kingdom from a different angle. So first, the fall of Babylon. And here shows that John, a stunning woman who dressed like a queen, she has drunk in blood and marriages and all innocent people. She's riding a dragon beast from the signs of vision, a symbol of the rebellious nations. And she's called Babylon, the bit of prostitute. A detailed symbol of the vision that would be very clear to John's first three readers. It could find the military, economic powers of Roman empires, but he also doing more. In his vision, John and Bledsoe together the words of image from every single Old Testament message while downfall of the ancient Babylon, Tyro and Adam. As I sure the Romes is simply the newest version of the Old Testament archetype of humanity in the rebellion against God. They come together from foreign nations, exalt their own economic military security in the false gods. As in something limited to the past or for the future, as a portrait of the human conditions throughout the history. And Babylon will come and go. Leading up to the day Jesus returned to replace Babylon with his kingdom. But how Jesus will kingdom come? At this point, the day of the Lord has despite a fire, earthquake, or harvest, not addicted by a final battle, is totally twice. The result, eradication of merits. Now take us back to the six bowls where the nations are gathered together to oppose God. And all of a sudden, Jesus appears. He's a great hero. He's the word of God, riding all right towards, ready to conquer the world of evil. But pay attention. He's covered with blood before the battle even begins. And that's because it's his own, his own weapon, his sword of the mount. The image adapted from Isaiah. It's telling us Armageddon will not be the blood bad. Rather, the same Jesus shed for his own blood and his enemies will come proclaiming the justice. He will hold accountable those who refuse to repent and then participate in the ruins of God's good world. Destructive hellfires will unleash the God's world and then become God's appointed destiny. After John sees a vision of Jesus' followers who have been murdered by Babylon, brought back to life, and they will reign in the Messiah for a thousand years. And after this, dragon will inspire by humanity rebellion against God. They will a nation together and rebel against God's kingdom. Before God's throne and justice, they all face the consequence of the eternal defeat. So the forces of spiritual evil, Everyone doesn't want to participate in God's kingdom or destroy it. They're given what? Exist themselves and for themselves. And so dragon Babylon, all those who choose them, eternal quantities, never can be decrupt by God's kingdom creation. That's a lot of debate about the relationship about the 1,000 years to the, the two battles. And something is referred to later college ascensions. Jesus returned, followed by a thousand years of kingdom on earth called Millennium, followed by the God's final judgment. Other people think a thousand years symbol and berserk victory over the spiritual evils and the leaders to battle the spectre of the future and return from the, the different angles. Whatever view you take, the main point is to clear. When Jesus turns a king, he will deal with the evil forever. He will keep those who have been faithful to him. And will conclude the final vision of marriage of heaven and earth. An angel shows John a stunning bride, symbolizes the new creation that has come forever to join God and his covenant people. 
God announced that He comes to live the humanity forever, that He is making all these things new. John's vision has confidence on Old Testament promises. It's placed a new heaven and earth, restored the creation, rehealed of pain, evil human history, and also a new garden of Eden, where paradox of eternal life with God. But it's not simply a return back to the garden. It's not forward to New Jerusalem and the great new city, human cultures and all the other cities and all work together, peace and harmony before God. And the most surprising twist of all, there's no temple built in creation because the presence of God um, were limited in the temple now for naming every square of each of the new world. And a new humanity is fulfilling the call placed on them. All back to act on the Bible, the rule of God's image. Part together with God taking creation to new and charted territory. And so in John Paul's lives, in the epic story of the whole Bible, that did not write the book as a secret code for you to decide the timeline of Jesus' return. It's a vision that brought hope and challenge to seven churches, seven churches, every generation of Christian sins. It's to reveal the pattern, God's promise that every human kingdom eventually becomes Babylon and must be resisted by the power of the slain lamb. And the promise, Jesus who loved, died for the whole world, not leave Babylon to go unchecked. He will return one day to remove the evil from this good world and make all things new, new. That is the promise that should motivate faithfulness, regeneration of God's people until the King returns. That's what the book of Revelation is all about.